when you get into woods at all, and I look for woods like this where you have a nice thick canopy coverage, thick shrubs, thick herb layer down here at the ground, this is where you're going to find black-legged ticks is actually living in habitat like this. And, um, you know, they, they search for, for blood meals on this low vegetation. So right now if I, you know, if there's a tick here and I brushed up against it, it'd get on me and start crawling upwards. I kind of like wanting to get on me now so I could uh, uh, liven up the demonstration a little bit. But um, most of the time what they do, though, is they, they live down in, in the leaf litter on the, on the forest floor. Um, especially if you have a good patch of oak trees on your property, um, uh, that, that seems to be about the best. But any area where you get a nice buildup of these dead leaves, this is where the ticks go to survive. And um, it's also where they spend the winter. A lot of people ask me, how do, how do these ticks survive the winter? Well, they just crawl right down in, into the forest, uh, under the forest floor, and uh, underneath the leaves, and uh, that's, that's where they can survive. And in, in winters where we have a good snowfall, like this last winter, that snow acts as a nice little blanket and actually helps the ticks to survive. Um, if we have a winter that is really cold and not much snow, that will, that will kill a lot of the ticks. But, uh, oh great, some itchweed here that I just bumped up against. Um, uh, but the, again, this, this is where they're gonna, going to be. And, and so if I was walking along here, again, ticks could get on me and feed. If I walk over this way, no, notice how we have a little transition in the habitat. And over here, it's a lot more open. I just left uh, the deer tick or black-legged tick country. Uh, you're not going to find them out here. There's that sharp of a, a divide. Um, and maybe, you know, it's right about here would be kind of the, the border. So if you have a yard, um, so, you know, pretend this is your backyard here and you have this nice lawn the transitions into woods, you might find the, the, the ticks within like the first foot or foot and a half out into your your grass, but um, even that would be just on the most humid days. Um, you know, the short grass is, is, tends to be kind of a nice little border for them. One thing that um, some people will do is, is landscape their yard so they have a border of rocks or wood chips between the lawn and the woods, and that will actually uh, serve as kind of a dry barrier that the ticks don't really cross. It'll also serve as a reminder for people if they, you know, go running into the woods, you know, they cross over that barrier and they think, oh, I'm getting into the tick habitat here. Um, once you get out into more open habitat like this, either, you know, kind of grassy or, or kind of open brushy areas, that's where you're going to find more of the, the wood ticks, the, our American dog ticks that are so abundant here in the state. And um, they're a lot less susceptible to drying out than the, the black-legged ticks, so they can they can take conditions like this. Um, let me see what else I want to stress here. One th an, an, one thing that, that people do besides creating uh, the landscape barrier is uh, people will sometimes go into wooded areas that they own and rake up the leaf litter, and that will also get rid of the tick habitat. Uh, of course, you might want to wear some repellent while you're doing that so you don't get ticks on yourself while you're cleaning up your yard. But that's that's something that, that can be done. Um, other people have done things like uh, burn the understory in, in the woods. We don't really recommend that because usually what, what happens then is um, you, you seldom get a burn that burns down far enough to, to kill the ticks. And of course, after you, you burn an area, you get a nice lush regeneration of, of uh, habitat or grass and, and low, uh, low bushes. and you actually create tick habitat. So, um, you know, besides wearing repellents, creating that landscape barrier, raking up leaf litter, those are a couple things that, that people can and, and do, uh, do often do. Um, another thing that sometimes, uh, we get a lot of questions from people that want to treat their own property for ticks. And say, say you own a piece of property where you have a nice lawn like this, but you also own several, several acres of woods and there might be a trail going through the woods. Um, there are pesticides that you can buy. In fact, the permethrin that works so well as a repellent um, also is available at farm and garden stores, and you can use that with a little hand sprayer unit to, to spray for ticks. Um, however, we don't recommend, you know, if you own 10 acres, spraying the, the whole 10 acres of woods. Focus on areas where people will come into contact with ticks, so right where that yard uh, transitions into woods. If you have a trail going through the woods, then you can you know, spray along the edges of the trail. And um, since the ticks are on the forest floor, you just want to you know, basically spray right down at the ground level. Do that you know, one treatment in May, and that, that will reduce the risk quite a bit. 
but again, uh, when, when push comes to shove, day to day, uh, what's going to do you the most good is wearing some repellent when you're out in, in habitat like this.